In order to recreate the Forbidden Forest in the Harry Potter, we need to go back in time. 22 years back. Hagrid takes the lot into the Forbidden Forest, and if we see closely, there are tall trees with some ground fog. There are some creatures lurking in the forest, which we're going to make, and there is also Ron's car. Most scenes happen in the night, but we do have a scene with similar vibe in the day as well. Although not technically the Forbidden Forest, but this will do. So before we begin, let's cast a vote. Do you want a day scene or a night scene? You can keep it in your heart and we shall see it in the end. The first step is to collect the environment assets that we're going to use. These will be from Quixel Megascans library. Now with the newer versions of Blender, the bridge gets the materials wrong all the time. So we use an older, portable version of Blender 2.93. This gets the materials correct. We simply copy these meshes with correct material setup in Blender 4.0. We put some rocks roughly on the side to start off. We can see that there is a lake or a stream here as well. So let's add a real-time river system. This is a phenomenal geometry node space system which uses a simple curve guide to guide the flow of the river. We adjust it according to the contours of the land. The flow is in the rivers, so in order to make it flow downstream, we select the curve, right click and reverse direction. With the environment assets that we downloaded, we can make the embankment and cover the rest with some forest ground photo scans. We can then use sculpting to conform the base ground and meshes with each other. Placing some boulders on the right side to give some more definition to the terrain. Now, there will be no forest if there were no trees, so let's add pine trees here using the amazing add-on Botanic. This is my go-to add-on for all the vegetation needs and it has never let me down. In order to distribute the trees on either side of the river, we use vertex painting and play with the seed value until we hit a good distribution of the trees. Hmm, let's see what's missing here. Well, it's forest, so more foliage, I suppose. So we'll just add this swamp B plant distribution. Now we don't want these plants to come out of the river, so we use the weight paint again to define the distribution of this low-lying foliage. That's more like it. Over time, these boulders do gather some foliage as well, so let's add it there too. For completion's sake, we'll add some mid-sized plants like ferns to give good ecosystem. So our flora is now complete. Let's now populate it with the fauna. What creatures do we have lurking here now? I think the most memorable one is Aragog, the giant spider. Let's place it here on the far darkest end of the forest. Ron's possessed flying car eventually became a creature of the forest as well. So let's add it into the scene. I do have links to all the models in the description. In order to give a flying path to the car, let's make a curved path and adjust it to where we want the car to go. We then place the car at the starting point of the curve and parent the car model to the curve. Now in the path properties, if we check the path animation box, set the frames to scene frames and give keyframes to the evaluation time, we have a perfect follow movement. Adjusting the rotation of the car, we have a viable forest air corridor. Now Harry summons his Patronus to fend off the Dementors. So in order to protect our little forest, we add some Patronuses. Patroni? I leave it up to you. What Patronus would you have if you were to summon one? Let me know. In the meantime, I'll make one for everyone. If we analyze the form of a Patronus, it has this glowing outline with a wavy trailing pattern inside. We'll build ours on similar lines but keep it simple and manageable. We download the mesh of a deer and add in an emission node. We'll mix this with a transparent node and a Fresnel will drive the factor. This Fresnel is broken up with a noise texture crunched up with a color ramp. Adjusting it will adjust the outline. We can increase the global scale and crush the X scale to give it a streaks effect. Adjusting the emission to somewhat blue, we have a viable and light Patronus material. We replicate the entire process with our next Patronus, which is a bear. This is a static model, so we give it a two-bone rig and add some noise to animate the head. We add a bird and a turtle, and now we have a complete fauna in our forest. To light, we place a large area light and a sun lamp directly at the back and another blasting from up top. This is to simulate the moonlight at night. In order to avoid overwhelming specular highlights of the light in the water below, we uncheck multiple importance of the large backlight. 
We can then add a low-lying fog in the system. And I think we are done. I have a completely free email newsletter where I share tips and tricks in 3D, snippets from my favorite books and much more. I think it provides value information, so do consider subscribing. You can also subscribe to the channel if you think it gives you value. I will see you soon. Farewell.